Hello friend, welcome to MS Tip Podcast. In this video, we'll go through the process of promoting additional domain controllers for existing domain. But first of all, why do we need to add additional domain controller to an existing domain? So the answer is simple. For service redundancy, or we can say a fault tolerance or load balancing or for domain authentication improvement in a remote site. So in case of server failure, we still have another on which we can provide a necessary service in our network which is avoids business discontinuity. We can add additional domain controllers over the network or from the backup media which is also known as a installation from media or we can say IFM hazard. First of all, we need a fresh clean installation of Windows Server 2008 R2 and uh, if you have uh, already Windows Server 2012, you have to configure its network card property to be able to start the, the promotion. So let's look at our uh, scenario. So this is our lab scenario where I have a, a root domain controller named srdfndc01.mylab.local and already I configured IP 192.168.49.10. Domain name is mylab.local and role is a primary domain controller with the DNS. Similarly, I have a, another member server which is workgroup server and name is srt dc 2 192 is the IP address. So, if coming back on this server, this is srt dc one and uh, this is the IP address. And we're going to look at server. Here we have srt dc so workgroup computer and already set a static IP. Let's check that IP configuration property IP version 4 and UVG. So IP address is set as 192.168.49.11 and I configured uh, the preferred DNS server is exactly the IP address of our main domain controller. So click on OK, close and close. So also make sure that you have a network connectivity between both of the server and just I'm going to check that 192.168.49.10 okay there's no problem and uh, also let's check the NS lookup as well as done so there is not an issue so NS lookup is running fine DNS service is running fine as well as we have a network connectivity so uh, now we have a Windows Server 2000 R2 which is currently in our group and we need to promote this server as an additional domain controller. Before, let's check the, what is the current forest functional level and a domain functional level on our root domain controller. So for that, I am going to open Active Directory Users and Computers. And here we go. Let's see the raise domain functional level and here we have Windows Server 2012. R2 and the same thing for uh, functional for us functional level we can say domain.msc and if you right click on it and select like raise for us functional level is currently set to windows server 2012 R2 okay so come back on uh, uh, our member server and on this server click on dashboard now click on add rules and features this wizard will open showing you the before you begin page click on next to continue select role based or feature based installation as we will install in a role on a single server click on next as this is the local installation the server will be listed and selected automatically from the server pool and that is srdf and dc02 select it and click on next from the list of roles select active directory domain service and uh, select it. The required features for the Active Directory domain service will be automatically selected. Click on Add Features. You will be back to the role page again. Click on Next to proceed the feature page. On the feature page, all installed features and required features by ADDS will be selected. Click on Continue. Click on Next to continue. The main role is selected to install. We have a brief information about Active Directory Domain Service. Click on Next. This is about the confirmation. So click on Install to start the Active Directory Domain Service installation. Once the installation is completed, another step is required. 
to promoting this server to a additional domain controller. So when role is installed, you will notice a yellow exclamation mark on the dashboard in a server manager. This tells you that uh, post deployment configuration steps are required. So to do that, click on promote this server to a domain controller. So on the deployment configuration page, uh, select the first options, add domain controller to an existing domain and our domain name is mylab.local. Now specify the credential. So that is our uh, enterprise administrator credential, administrator at mylab.local and his password. So click on OK and now click on Next. So define if server should be a DNS server and a global catalog. I would strongly recommend it installing both roles on each domain controller in your environment. And select the site to which this DC server belongs to and uh, define the DSRM password. Currently we are going with a default first site name. In a later videos, we will discuss about Active Directory site and subnet. So currently, leave the all these value to default. Specify the DSRM password and click on Next. Do not worry about DNS delegation as this server is not DNS already. Click on Next. In additional options, you can define if you want to install this domain controller from uh, IFM, means installation from media, if you have it and point from which DC replication should be done. In a later video, we will also discuss about IFM, but currently, and we have a single domain controller, that's why I am going to select replicate from SRT IFM DC01 dot level. So, click on next to continue. The location to install ADDS database will be displayed. Um, browse the different location if you need to change the default path. And I am not going to change that. Click on next to continue. Here's the review of sense. Once uh, read it, whatever you select, all these options are here. If you want to modify it, go back and modify the options. And now come back and click on next to check the prerequisites. Once all prerequisites will pass and you are sure that all settings you have set up properly, you can start the installation by clicking on install. After you click on install button, wait until the wizard will do its job and after a server restart, you will have additional Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller. Once the computer restart, log into the computer again, but now you can see we have a MyLab slash administrator. Coming back on our root domain controller, under domain controller, you can clearly see we have a two domain controllers, SRTFNDC01 as well as SRTFNDC02. 
and uh, similarly we can find uh, Active Directory users in computer consoles are there if you open it and similarly under domain controller we will find out our both domain controllers are there but if we check over here here is selected srt dc 2 and on this server we have a srt dc 01mylabcom let's check the replication between these two server by going active directory site and services okay so here we go xman sites currently both server are under default first site name and here we go so we srt append dc01 so right click on it click on all task check replication topology click on ok once you have to refresh so click on refresh now you will find out a replication link between srt dc02 to srt dc01 right click on it and if you click on replicate now it's a active directory domain service has replicated the connection similarly on srt dc02 just right click on it select all task select check application topology click on ok right click and refresh and right click on it select replicate now that's done and let's get a proof so this is the srt dc01 under srt dc01 i'm going to create a one user name uh, user1 on next and finish so we have a user user1 in which i created on a srt dc01 come back on srt02 under users see we we'll find a user1 and similarly if i create a user on uh, our edc let's specify the password click on next click on finish and we have a user2 if I refresh on SRT DC01, say of a user 2, that means both domain controllers uh, are uh, synchronizing with each user, and that is the process we known as a replication. So, this is the how domain controllers uh, synchronize with each other.